Hello and welcome to the Christopher Beast channel. My name is Will filling in for Chris today and we're going to be talking about Signalis. The flesh below Lang is how many notes and documents refer to nowhere. This being said, location or thing is quite confusing. Um, however, by analyzing it and some items related to it, uh, as well as uh, considering the king in yellow, we can come to gain a greater understanding of it. Uh, just a quick heads up, this video may contain spoilers about the game Signalis, so if you have not yet finished a play your playthrough um, and do not wish to have it spoiled for you, uh, then go ahead and finish the game before continuing watching. Several documents and notes refer to the flesh, and with them we can gain a greater understanding of what it is. One example of someone referencing the flesh can be found in the Dreamer's Diary, where they state, I was a worker in the mines of Lang. When I was consumed by a shapeless mass of flesh, my flesh joining with the flesh of many others, until only my bones remained. My mind joined the collective of flesh which persists beyond death. This document establishes that the flesh beneath the mines creates a collectivity of minds for those that it consumes, and that this collectivity continues past the death of the individual. Another reference can be found within Nowhere. This diary is labeled The Dreamer, and states, A prison which the only escape is death. Deep below, the dreamer floats in the sea of flesh, the red eye birthing a new world from their dream for eternity, and each time the dreamer turns over in their sleep. The world turns over, too, until only flesh remains. This document establishes that the red eye, the dreamer, and the flesh below are all closely connected, with the dreamer's dream being born from the red eye, but growing weaker until it is overrun by the flesh. Both documents that refer to the flesh do so in comparison to the dreamer, establishing them as deeply connected people. However, seeing as we don't know exactly who or what the dreamer is, that doesn't really currently help with us understanding what the flesh is. From here, we should talk about the next major thing that relates the flesh and reality, and this is the plates. The seals, or the plates, which are found through out nowhere, are also the plates that are depicted on the king in yellow as being the seals holding the book closed. These seem to be made out of the basalt rocks mined uh, in the mines with parts of flesh from below within it. These plates are something that can certainly be used to understand more about the flesh and the nature that it takes. Each plate required an action from Elster in order to obtain, and most of these actions either related to the name of the plate um, or could be used to tell details about the plate that uh, we obtained. So the plate of knowledge was uh, acquired after using the rings on the empress, and due to the nature of this puzzle giving us an insight into the life of this figure, it can be seen that this is the knowledge that we learn. The plate of love was obtained after lighting an incense at the altar for the Young family, seeing how Elster loves Arion. Uh, this can be understood to be representative of that love. The plate of balance was obtained after using the dolls to balance a scale to take the plate. The plate of eternity was acquired after opening the magpie box early into the game, and it takes us to the radio station. The exact connection with the name is currently not known. This traveling, however, to the radio station holds some level of importance. Uh, as if we are physically sent to the station, then the use of bioresonance to bend space and possibly time as well um, that was used by the plate in order for us to access the radio module. It should be added um, that upon accessing the plate, a short cutscene plate, where we do see a large beating heart as well as the plate puzzle within nowhere. This could be uh, interpreted as us communicating with the flesh, and as a result, perhaps it was the flesh's desire that we gained the ability to go deeper towards it, uh, with it using its powers to send us to this location and to let us gather this tool, or perhaps this is symbolic of it calling to us and us being tempted by its call to go deeper. The plate of flesh was obtained after completing the maze, um, which can be seen as a symbolic gesture of nowhere as a whole, um, with it being a giant maze, um, and referred to that uh, referred to as a labyrinth within the code. Uh, the plate of sacrifice is found in the second maze, and its meaning could be uh, s interpreted to be similar as that of the plate of flesh. However, uh, at this time we are unsure of its exact meaning. Uh, our best guess is that somehow this second trial of wires is a sacrifice of some kind for Elster or someone. Um, however, exactly how that would be the case is currently beyond uh, our understanding. Due to the ordeals connected with each of these plates, it could be seen 
as a trial that must be surmounted in order to prove oneself, and perhaps, much like the trials within nowhere, gathered the plates needed to open the door, the plates on the book may, cons may come loose during uh, the trials outside of the flesh prison. Uh, if this is the case, then it could be assumed that the various trials Elster went through caused the rest of the seals to fall off. When one enters nowhere, there were three seals still on the book. By the time they return, however, one has fallen off. This could be assumed to be the flesh for a couple of reasons. Um, this being the literal flesh of nowhere, or the passing beyond the flesh, as Elster survives death, in order to continue her journey and thus sheds her mortality, at least once, and gains at the shore of the dead before passing this threshold. The King in Yellow is established within its own canon as being beyond reality, a fourth-dimensional creature beyond comprehension who is able to corrupt the minds of men, as well as distort reality itself. If it holds the ability to distort reality, then the greatly distorted area of nowhere, where doors are nonsensical and the decay is extreme, could be assumed to be connected. As Chris outlined in his Space and Time Are Dead video, um, seeing as space is dead in nowhere, and then perhaps a fourth dimensional being could be to blame. Uh, due to the many connections between the king and nowhere, um, with it being the location of the plates, as well as it being a location certainly within the realm of his creation, it has been argued that the king and the flesh below are the same being. Even if these two aren't accepted to be the same being, then they are certainly connected to some large degree, um, which will be very important going into future theories. Alright folks, and with that, the connections between the King in Yellow and the Flesh Below Lang have now been established. This is just one part of Chris's series exploring what the King in Yellow means in the lore, and we are very excited to continue working on these concepts. But for now, this is all we've got for you, so if you want to see this as an or in an organized fashion, uh, take a visit to the wiki page that uh, Chris has been working on for this video, it will be linked below. Uh, if you'd like to talk to other Signalis fans about the lore or just in general, uh, we have two discords that are, will also be linked below. Uh, the main discord, VSL, and a Signalis discord, um, Unoff. Uh, they are both cool places, and uh, we would suggest both of them to you guys. Uh, once again, thank you to Mr. Skelly uh, for supporting Chris's membership. Um, your contributions help make this series possible. So with that, this has been Will filling in for Christopher Beast, and we will see you guys next time. Have a good one.